The last video was really just an introduction into the integration of composition functions. So now what we're going to be working through are various examples and what you might come across when you're when you're trying to do this process. We're just going to start out and work through these problems with number 5. So this is the problem that number this is the problem that number 5 prevents presents you with. And remember the key things to look for right now is that pattern of that f of u du. So we're trying to find out some sort of composition function, so an inner function um, with some sort of outer function going on. And then we're going to also have to look for the multiplication of the derivative of that inner function because that way we can just integrate it by using the substitution process. So I'm going to go ahead and once again my my tip to you is in this kind of in this pattern recognition what we're going to look for is composition function so most of the time we're going to look for an inner function brought up to a power. So that's what I'm going to use right here and the more you do this the better you'll get at it but my inner function that I'm going to observe here is 1 plus 2x. All right. And then now we are going to have to um, look for that whole u to a power and then times du um, with respect to x. So I'm going to go ahead and derive that, that inner function. And what we would get is 0 plus and then 2. So 2. And I will turn this into a differential. So du equals 2 times dx. So these, by doing this step, um, what you're going to hope to see is can you replace all the x terms in this integral with u's? Can you substitute in u um, equivalents? So when I rewrite this, here I do have my inner function, which is u to the fourth. So there, right there, I recognize that I have an f of u. And then, then I hope that I can rewrite this differential, this 2dx, um, in terms of u. And I sure can because of that, that process that I did that I linked the du with, with dx. So um, out goes the 2dx, in goes the du. All right. And so now what we can do is just this general power rule of integration. Um, now that we have this all in terms of u, we can integrate with respect to u. So I'm going to add 1 to the exponent and divide by the whole thing. So I get 4 plus 1 divided by 4 plus 1. And then don't forget, I need a plus c because this is an indefinite integral. So overall, I'm going to go back with my u, plug in 1 plus 2x. This is all to the fifth divided by 5, so I'm just going to rewrite this as 1 fifth, and then plus my c. There's the answer right there. Your part of the directions for number 5 is to check this as well. Don't forget to check your answers. When you go through and drive this antiderivative, um, what you should be getting is this function right here. The next problem I'm going to do, um, this is going to involve a little bit more work, because it doesn't always work out that nicely, of course. So we're going to look at number 19. And still, we're hoping to establish this right here, um, and then eventually just use the general power rule of integration on this, and then any other properties that we know of in the past. So I'm going to observe here that we don't have any rules that have quotients in them. We have, we have the quotient rule for deriving, but in terms of integrating, we don't have any rules here. So what I am going to do is I'm going to try to avoid this and rewrite this as, as just not a quotient. So here I'm going to have x squared, and I'm going to cross the line, change the side on this whole power. So remember, powers are always made up of base and an exponent. This is my base. Here's an exponent. I'm going to take this whole power and cross the line, um, but therefore I have to change the sign of that exponent. So it's going to be to the negative 2 and then dx. I'm going to do that process of, all right, u is most likely some sort of function that's brought up to a power, so I'm going to establish this as my u. It's going to be 1. Okay, and then so therefore my du dx would be just 3x to the second, and I am going to just write it as a differential right off the bat there. So this is one of those examples where it's not so easily clearly seen, like my example 5, that there's a f of u and then a du directly in that problem. Um, so there's a couple ways you can go about doing this. The way that I'm going to approach this is I'm going to first rearrange this 
And remember our goal is to get out all of our x's and replace them with u's somehow. So I'm going to have 1 plus, I'm going to first rearrange this to the negative 2. And these are just factors that are being multiplied, so of course that doesn't matter. The order in which you multiply does not matter. So here I have that. This is easily subbed out. What I can rewrite that is r u to the negative 2. But this is not so easily subbed out because right now I know that du is equal to 3 times x to the second dx. Um, however, I don't have the 3 times x to the second dx, so I can't just simply plug in a u there. So one thing that you can do, and this is a little bit strange, but if I were to multiply this piece right here um, by 1 third and then times 3, um, 1 third times 3 is just 1, so I haven't changed anything about this equation. Um, but what I've allowed myself to do is I have this 1 third in there, but and then times, here's my 3x to the second dx. Now I can sub this in for that 3x squared dx. So now I can put a du. So once again, because the order in which you multiply it does not matter, what I have is 1 third u to the negative 2 du. Okay, and now this is just going to follow all those old rules that we have. We have a scalar, so it's one third u to the negative two du. Okay, and then I get to use this general power rule of integration, so it's going to be all equal to one third. And then here I'm going to up this by one u to the negative one, divide that by negative one, that new exponent, and then do a plus c. So all in all, what I get is one third, and then here I'm going to sub back in what I know u is equal to, 1 plus x to the third, and then to the negative 1 plus c, and then I also know that this is negative, because I mean if you divided this by a negative it would all be negative, so in the back of your book you're probably going to get something like this, 1 over, and then in parentheses 1 plus x to the third, and then times all three on the bottom plus c. Final answer. Another approach to this, um, and this is how your book actually does, I'm going to break it off from here. Alright, so I'm going to start, I'm just going to rewrite this. I'm going to rewrite this, um, change the order around though, so I have 1 plus x cubed to the negative 2, then x to the second dx. All right, this is how your book would approach it. Um, what they would do is, what I want to sub out is this x squared dx. So knowing that du is equal to 3x squared dx, um, what your book does is just divide by 3. Okay, so you can divide by 3. So in other words, 1 third du is equal to x squared dx. Okay, this is another way to look at it. So now what you can go ahead and do is you can sub in the u because you know u is this 1 plus x cubed to the negative 2, u to the negative 2, times, and then here we're going to sub this out, sub this out, and sub this in. So we're going to have 1 third du. Okay, and then now you can go about solving this in that typical way. Um, this 1 third is a scalar, it's a scalar multiple, um, so you can go ahead and just pull that out and then now you're you're in the same spot as I was up here. Okay, so that is number 19. All right, with number 27, once again, we're going to try to get it into the form of this f of u times du. So when you're looking at this, the problem is, once again, we have this quotient, so I am going to rewrite this as the integral of, and then all in parentheses, x and then times x to the negative one-half, because on the bottom there we would have had x to the one-half, but I'm going to take it up to the top, so that power can go to the top, but you have to switch the sign of that, that exponent. Um, so here's my issue. Um, you can start going through, all right, let's let u equal this whole thing, all right? So you could start to try to work this aspect of it, um, but then du, dx would just be equal to 2x. And what you're going to see is that doesn't match up here. Um, there is no 
if you were to try to relate du with dx um, so that you could sub out this dx and replace it with the du uh, what you you don't have the ability to do that because this x to the negative one half dx is not the same as that so they can't be substituted you could try to rework this and say oh well let's let u equal just x and then we could maybe change this to u to the one negative one half and hope that this was the derivative of just x but that won't work either so this is where people might start to panic and do properties and rules that don't exist um, but here's what I'm gonna go ahead and do I can't use this I can't use this anti-differentiation process of a composition function. I can't use my u substitution. Um, so what I can hope to do is rewrite this in another way. And I'm going to just set us up with, I could definitely rewrite this. I can take this x to the negative 1 half and distribute it to each one of these terms in here. Because it's this whole thing times x to the negative 1 half. So what I can write is this would be equal to x squared times x to the negative one half plus three x times x to the negative one half plus seven times x to the negative one half and then I get dx and so when all this is said and done remember these are two powers with the same bases so you can just add these exponents I'm gonna get x to the three halves plus three x to the one half because this is one and then plus seven x to the oh, negative one half dx and now what I hope you can use is your problem solving skills we have our old properties we have or I'm sorry we have our old rules we have six rules now it was this one right here this is the the composition function integration um, we're using that u substitution but then don't forget we had we had all of these rules too from the past um, these are the ones that I'm really focused on right here and these ones are the ones that you can use to solve this problem so I'm gonna leave you with that um, to solve this using those old rules um, there's the sum rule I can see here where you can break each one of these up and integrate each one of these terms individually and then there's some scalars there but I'm gonna leave you with that and